Study basers! I'm going to teach you a few important truss rod lessons and also show you how to replace a truss rod nut. So first, what is a truss rod? The truss rod is a tension rod that runs inside the neck of your base. So the tension of the base strings pull or bow the neck in one direction. So think of a bow and arrow. Imagine that your base neck and strings are like the bow and string. The truss rod counteracts the tension that the strings place on the neck and pulls it back in the other direction. So that straightens your neck and allows your base strings to stay closer to the fingerboard. Truss rods have a truss rod nut at the end, and you turn it to tighten or loosen the tension of the truss rod. Let me show you against a straight edge how the truss rod works. So when the truss rod is loose, you'll see that it's straight. And when you tighten the truss rod nut, it makes the truss rod bow or curve. Now, depending on the nut, you'll need a certain kind of tool to turn it. It's often a hex key or Allen wrench, as they're called. Uh, but sometimes you need a nut driver or a screwdriver. Now, it's very important to have the right tool to turn your truss rod nut, and we'll talk about that shortly. So some truss rod nuts are welded on, and they can't be replaced, and others are removable and replaceable. If you don't know what you're doing when you're adjusting your truss rod, you can cause some problems. And some truss rod problems can be pretty bad news. So let's talk about what problems can occur. One problem is breaking the truss rod by over-tightening it. And replacing a truss rod requires removing the fretboard off the neck. So that's a very expensive repair, and what most people end up doing is just replacing their entire neck. So the first important lesson is be gentle when you adjust your truss rod. So even a quarter turn can be quite a bit. So take a pencil and mark the 12 o'clock point so that you know where you started. Now you don't need to be in fear of adjusting it, just don't go crazy turning it a lot. When you adjust your truss rod, loosen the strings completely and loosen the truss rod before tightening it. So remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey. So Turning it right makes it tight, and turning it left loosens it. A more common truss rod problem is a stripped truss rod nut. If the truss rod nut requires a hex wrench, stripping it means that the six flat sides of the hex-shaped hole have been rounded off, and the Allen wrench can't grab anything to turn the truss rod nut, and that means you can't adjust the truss rod. If your truss rod nut is removable, this shouldn't be too difficult to fix, but uh, you'll have to figure out how to remove the old nut and replace it with a new one. Now, if your truss rod nut is welded on, it might be more trouble. And how can you tell if it's welded on? Well, it's hard to tell by looking at it. You'll have to research your particular base, make, model, and year to find out. And uh, you might have to ask the manufacturer, or you might just need to take it to a guitar repair person. What causes a truss rod nut to strip? One reason a truss rod nut can strip is from applying too much turning force with the hex key. So the nut is often made from a soft metal on purpose so that you're more likely to strip the nut than break the truss rod. So another lesson, if the nut is hard to tighten or frozen, don't force it. Just stop and take it to a guitar repair shop. And don't take it to a music store, they might strip the nut too. Find the top local person who only does instrument repairs from their dedicated shop. The more likely way a truss rod nut gets stripped is someone using the wrong size wrench or a cheap wrench to turn it. So if the wrench doesn't fit tightly, it might turn and round out the hex-shaped hole even without much force. So another lesson. Never turn a wrench that doesn't fit very tightly, so there should be no wiggle room. As an example, I just bought this supposedly quality brand of hex keys for $5. Now, it might be hard to see in the video, but the eighth inch key wiggles inside the new GNL replacement truss rod nut. Now, I would never turn a key that had this amount of play. There should be no play. Now, 
look at this quality set of Bonhus keys. They're more expensive, but they don't wiggle. They're a perfect fit, and they're less likely to strip the nut. Here's the next lesson about your base truss rod. Look up the wrench size for the truss rod nut for the make, model, and year of your base. So keep in mind that even the same model might change sizes from one year to another. So don't guess. Then get high quality wrenches. So your base may have come with wrenches, but they may be cheap, poorly sized wrenches. Or guess what? It's possible that the wrong key ended up in the case at the music store. You never know. I bought this great GNL bass a long time ago from someone I knew. It played perfectly and I made the mistake of not inspecting the truss rod nut. Well, of course, someone had stripped it. A truss rod adjustment is long overdue for this bass, so I will finally replace the truss rod nut and show you the process. But here's another lesson for you. When buying a used bass, check that all of the nuts, screws, and adjustable parts are in order. The truss rod is probably the most important one to check out, uh, since repairs can be pretty expensive. So here's the stripped out GNL nut. Look, it's totally rounded out. If I put the correct size key in, it grabs nothing. Now how do we remove a stripped truss rod nut? Well, depending on how badly it's stripped, it may be easy or it may be difficult. If it's not too rounded out, Sometimes just a good, correct size Allen key might be enough to loosen it and remove it. Sometimes you can use what's called a Torx bit to get it out. Otherwise, you might need some kind of special tool. So there are what are called easy out bits, which when turned, they dig into and grab the walls of the hole and turn the nut. So you can find these in auto stores or hardware stores. The worry here is that a cheap, easy out bit might break off inside the hole. The nut probably won't be that stuck, but that is a possibility and it could cause a whole new problem for you. Another way is to take the next bigger size Allen key and grind it down to fit tightly in the hole. So if you don't have a grinder, you can buy the famous gripper tool from Stuart McDonald. It's a tapered hex key made just for this job. That's what I have, so let's see if it does the trick. Okay, the nut is really stuck on there. It's not coming off easily. So what I'm doing now is turning it back and forth to see if I can break it free. Now you might be tempted to squirt some kind of lubricant in there, but I would worry about causing the wood to swell. Still no luck. It's so stuck, I'm a little worried that something might snap. So I'm gonna go double check that this is a removable nut. Okay, I checked and it is removable. So I'm gonna try a little more force. Oh, now after it broke free, it's unscrewing easily. Here's the old nut. Now, had the gripper tool not worked, another approach would be to cut slots on the surface of the nut, and then you could use a flathead screwdriver to turn it. Now, getting clear access to cut that slot without damaging your base might be pretty difficult, so you need to be careful. You might even get a professional to do it. Now to install the new nut. First, I'm going to add a tiny dab of grease on the truss rod. Something like wheel bearing grease or lithium grease will work. And I'll add some inside the new nut too. So GNL included a couple of washers with the nut. So I'll put the washers on the truss rod. Then I screw on the new nut.
With the new nut on, now we can adjust the truss rod and set up the base. Okay, let's review the truss rod tips. First, find out the correct size wrench to use for your exact base. Keep in mind that even the same model might change sizes from one year to another. You can usually look up the year of your base by the serial number. Next, buy a high quality wrench or set of wrenches in the correct size. I like these Bondhoos keys, but there are lots of good quality ones out there. Just be beware, be cautious that there are a lot of poorly sized cheap wrenches out there. Next, never turn a wrench that has any wiggle room. The next tip, never tighten a truss rod which is stuck or frozen. So just take it to a shop. Don't risk it. And lastly, when buying a used base, remember to check that you can adjust all of the adjustable parts, especially the truss rod. Okay, study basers, I hope these tips help you avoid or fix any problems with your truss rod. Thank you.